Be sure to check out my store for the stuff I use and templates at a low cost, and get my everything pack so you can have everything in my store at a reduced cost, less than $20 if you tweet it out. What's up guys, Quezzy here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do these two cube effects in Cinema 4D. Uh, this is a pretty cool effect, you can see I just did this with the phase logo, it's real simple, real easy to do, it takes maybe like 5-10 minutes, I don't know. Uh, but yeah guys, let's get started. The materials that I use in this will be available down in the description below. Um, and the Lightroom I'm using is my own personal Lightroom for my store if you want to buy it or just use whatever Lightroom you have. Not a big deal. Uh, but let's get right into it. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide these two guys. And the first thing you want to do is bring in either your logo path or use the uh, text path here. And uh, when you do that, I'm just going to go ahead and get the logo out. You can do the text. Uh, let me get that phase logo real quick. Let me just center it. Alright, I'm going to bump up the size a bit too. Alright, and then you'll either have your text or your logo path, and then you want to go ahead and get an extrude. Put it, put the path in there, and you want to set it to something like 250 or some big number like that. And then what the next thing you want to do is go ahead and get a cube. So you can just go ahead and press that, and the cube will come up default. And you want to do 10, 10, 100 so X and Y or 10 Z is 100 in size and one thing I do is get out of my camera view and bring the logo back a little further than normal and you'll see why later on but then we want to go ahead to MoGraph and get a cloner and put that cube in the cloner and then select the cloner and we want to set the mode to grid ar grid array and you want to make the size something big so like 850 I think I did um, so it's fairly beyond each end of the logo um, and then for the next one you want to do about 500 or 550 I believe is what I did and then the third one can stay at 200 that's no big deal and then you just want to bump up the sizes the count I mean and so you want to do like 80 and maybe 65 for Y. And for some reason that's not updating. There we go. And then for the third one, you just want to do one. There we go. So uh, sometimes with this, it won't load in right away. You could see that like, it just happened. Um, the next thing you want to do is have the cloner selected and go ahead to MoGraph, Effector, and Volume. Now you want to just uncheck scale in parameter, you don't need that, and go to effector and where it says volume object, go ahead and drag that extruded logo or text in there. And then again on volume, go to parameter and check visibility. And this might take a little bit to load. Alright, there we go. And you'll notice nothing really happened. And that's when the uh, moving the logo forward now comes into play. So if you move it forward, now it starts to appear and we're gonna like this is really glitchy for whatever reason you won't be able to like fill up the whole thing sometimes but if you go ahead to the scale and just bring it in then eventually it will fill out and I don't know why it does that but it's just something that happens for whatever reason um, then you can go ahead and on the extrude layer you just want to press each one of these dots twice and that will just hide it and then you want to select the cloner again and go to MoGraph Effector Random. And you can see all these cubes go uh, spreading out. And you could mess around with these settings and get some different looks. But for now, we're just going to go position X0, Y0, Z. I go 25, but you could do even more. You could do less. Up to you. And at this stage, you can go ahead and play around with the cube to get different looks. So you could just keep it as a standard cube, which looks fine, or you could add a fillet, which is what I did, and I did a radius of one. I'm gonna try two this time and do a subdivision of two as well. Um, you could press C on the keyboard and make it editable, and then um, change things up and add indents and things like that. But I don't think my computer is gonna be able to render that and keep up with that, because that's gonna be a lot of uh, polygons and things. Um, but the next thing we wanna do is go to that extrude and duplicate it, Control C, Control V, 
then make it visible again and now you can see the one of two render styles we have so I'm gonna go ahead and add the material so the material of the extrude is gonna be this gray uh, actually no it's not this gray metal it's gonna be these two materials the weathered materials and we're gonna go ahead and drag them both on there and then we're gonna go ahead and get the brass color and drag it onto the cube and now that is the first render done um, I should have made the logo a little big bigger I think it would have looked a little better and I might even have to bring it forward a little more for it to look good so I'm gonna go ahead and do that actually I'm gonna select that extrude bring it forward a little more something like that and there we go that's that effect and I would render it out but you guys saw it in the beginning you have the general idea of what it looks like now the next thing there I'm gonna show you if you want to do the second render effect all you need to do is get this extrude and also you could add some caps to this do like a fillet cap of like one or two or something if you so desire I mean that's up to you but let's go out and let's bring this extrude forward so it gets in front of all those cubes protruding out and then we're gonna have to go ahead to object the object tab on that layer and expand it even more so it fills out all the cubes we don't want them sticking out the back in case we want to rotate or get a shot from the back or something and let's go back to our camera view and we're gonna go ahead to click on the cube and hold and we're gonna get the, sh the landscape here and we want to check spherical and you can see we get this ball it kind of looks like a meteor or something and you can go ahead and play with the seed and get different looks just do whatever but when you get something you like you just want to scale it down to about that size um, and then bring it forward so about half of it's in the logo the other half is sticking out the front like that and then you want to duplicate this a few times and put it in some different areas so I did something like one here duplicate it and then you can change the seed if you duplicate it uh, if you want to get different looks I just didn't um, and then do it again and maybe do it over here cut off this edge something like that once you have them where you want you want to select all three of them press C on the keyboard right click connect objects and delete then you want to go ahead to the extrude uh, the logo right click select children C right click select children right click connect objects and delete then you want to go here and get the bool tool or bool effect I don't know what to call it and you want to drag both of those in there and put the extrude on top and you'll see you get this effect with the cube sticking out of the cutout parts and you can see this is a pretty cool look and I think the gold really looks sweet on um, the cubes especially if you add the fillet caps like I did you get a really nice shine and I th it just looks really nice guys so hopefully you guys enjo enjoyed this tutorial if you did be sure to drop a like and follow me on Twitter at Quezzy, add my Snapchat, which is also Quezzy for exclusive stuff. Subscribe for more tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.